I am Prashant Garg and uh, with me uh, I am very fortunate to have a distinguished faculty Dr. Savitri Sharma who is uh, heading the ocular microbiology department uh, for so many years and definitely you all will be benefited by the experience that she is having with her. Dr. Sujata Das uh, who is uh, in the cornea service of uh, LV Prasad I Institute in Bhuvaneshwar um, uh, she also has interest uh, in ocular infections and working with Dr. S uh, Savitri Das, she has gained tremendous uh, experience in clinical evaluation, microbiology and management of corneal infection. I am also fortunate to have Dr. Namrata Sharma who will be shortly joining us and she will be talking today on surgical management and if you review the literature you will find that she has published extensively on various aspects of corneal infections, particularly the surgical management of corneal infections. These are my financial disclosures. However, I will not be having any bias uh, in the contents that I am going to present to you. If you look at this case of 35-year-old female who presented to us with a history of one month duration, can you dim the light? Um, if such a patient walks in your clinic, uh, uh, how are you going to manage this case? And compare this case with another case of 37-year-old male who was using contact lenses for keratoconus and presented to us with symptoms of pain, redness, watering of two days duration. If you focus on these two cases, the questions that come to our mind as a clinicians are, are they suffering from the same disease? On gross examination, the answer seems to be yes, probably both of them are suffering from corneal infections. But is the etiological diagnosis same in both the disease or are they different? And this has an implication on how are you going to manage these patients. And today's course is going to help you understand and make differential diagnosis of corneal infections, identify the etiological diagnosis, understanding the role of laboratory diagnosis and then discuss with you the various management aspects. Why is it important particularly when we are practicing in a developing country? If you look at the epidemiological data of corneal infection, you will realize that nearly 1.5 to 8 million corneal infections cases occur each year in developing world, which is much, much higher than what are being seen in developed countries. Based on the study that was conducted in Madurai and review of the data that I showed you, Dr. John Witcher from Proctor Foundation and Dr. M. Srinivasan wrote this editorial in 1997 where they identified corneal ulcers in developing world a silent epidemic. There are many more challenges in the management of this disease and these challenges are because the epidemiology of corneal ulceration in developing country varies very much from those seen in developed countries. If you look at the epidemiology, the age groups that are affected by corneal ulceration, you will realize that in Western world there are two peaks of corneal ulcer. One peak which is seen in um, around 20-25 year, whereas another peak is 60 to 80 years of age, which is different than the age distribution that is seen in our country and other neighboring developing countries. The most common age group that is affected is 20 to 50 years. And if you look at the economical implication of this epidemiology, you will realize that probably the corneal ulcer in developing countries affect the most productive age group and has a wide economical implications. In western world, contact lens is the most important a predisposing factor for corneal infection followed by ocular surface diseases particularly in elderly population. In contrast to this in countries like India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Ghana trauma is the most important risk factor for corneal infection. If you look at the time 
of presentation you will realize that we have another challenge that most of the patients presenting to ophthalmologist usually have longer duration of symptoms before they seek opinion from ophthalmologist and we were surprised to see that nearly 20% of the patients presented to lv prasad i institute with duration of complaints of more than 1 month because of these facts it is not surprising to see patients who present to you with a corneal infiltrate extending from limbus to limbus another important challenge that we face as a clinician while we handle cases of corneal ulcer is the nature of prior consultation you will realize a large number of these patients are treated by traditional healers and only 20% of the patient seeks opinion from trained medical professionals or ophthalmologist and that makes the scenario very complicated because they have been treated by variety of homemade remedies or even corticosteroids because of the off shelf uh, uh, prescription of these drugs the microbiology also makes management of corneal ulcer in our country challenging among the gram positive ulcers nearly 50% of the cases uh, are caused by fungi the proportion of cases caused by acanthamoeba is also relatively higher as compared to the western world if you look at the incidence of 1 to 2% accounts for significant number of cases of acanthamoeba uh, causing corneal ulcer in our countries why we are considering fungi and acanthamoeba as challenge because in contrast to most of the antibacterials which are bactericidal antifungal agents are fungi static they require prolonged treatment and there is a high treatment failure rate seen with management of both fungi and acanthamoeba so you have a unique challenge that if a large number of uh, cases of corneal ulcers are caused by these two pathogens then you are likely to get higher failure rate when you treat these patients another important challenge is infections caused by actinomycetes group that is nocardia and atypical mycobacteria although both these pathogens have been described to have a very classical clinical picture there is lack of awareness about these organism causing corneal infection even among ophthalmologists another important challenge with this or this group of organism is that they are often missed on routine microscopic examination that is on gram stain or gene size stain because they are they they do not take up these stain properly and unless you include acid fast staining or are familiar by the by the paucity of staining on gram stain you are likely to miss these organisms both these organisms also require specific therapy they are not likely to resolve on the conventional management options there are challenges with antimicrobial susceptibility while most of the gram positive organisms are susceptible to cefazolin and vancomycin and gram negative organisms have high sensitivity to ciprofloxacin and aminoglycoside there are changes in the susceptibility pattern over period of time what are these changing spectrum of susceptibility that if you look at the fluoroquinolones they are showing declining trend of susceptibility both for gram positive as well as gram negative organisms particularly the first generation fluoroquinolones how about the newer fluoroquinolones such as gatifloxacin and moxifloxacin we looked at the susceptibility pattern in 2009 and then tried to compare the data that we collected in the year 2002 we found that in the year 2002 when both gati and moxifloxacin were introduced they had very low mic even against ciprofloxacin resistant gram positive organisms however the mic levels against ciprofloxacin resistant gram negative organisms was high that is they were not showing any activity or poor activity against ciprofloxacin resistant gram negative organism but what change has happened is that in 6 years time we found that proportion of organisms susceptible to gati and moxifloxacin has reduced dramatically the ciprofloxacin resistant staph aureus 
the gatifloxacin was or the susceptibility to gatifloxacin was in 41.2% while only 7.2% isolates showed susceptibility to moxifloxacin. And similar trends are seen in coagulase negative staph as well as strep pneumonia. We are also seeing another alarming trend in corneal infections particularly related to antibacterial susceptibility. We are seeing progressively more and more pseudomonas isolates resistant to ciprofloxacin as well as other drugs making it even multi-drug resistant to pseudomonas. The worrisome thing is that the corneal infections caused by these multi-drug resistant pseudomonas, infection, uh, pseudomonas are very very rapidly progressive and you do not you are not left with any molecule to which these infections respond another trend is seen against uh, staph aureus there is increasing number of cases caused by methicillin resistant staph aureus over period of time nearly 50 or uh, 40 percent of uh, uh, gram positive isolates are showing oxacillin or methicillin resistance and this is important because these MRSAs or methicillin resistant staph aureus shows higher resistance to other antibiotics. Some of the new pathogens have also been incorporated in the corneal infection and one of these pathogen is microsporidia. These are ubiquitous intracellular spore forming parasites which are often considered as opportunistic pathogens. They were primarily isolated from systemic Im uh, infections in immunocompromised patients. But now there are reports of this organism being isolated from patients of keratoconjunctivitis which is characterized by papillary or follicular reaction on the conjunctiva along with lid edema mimicking like adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis. In addition to these conjunctival signs, the keratoconjunctivitis also shows corneal signs in the form of coarse punctate epithelial erosions which can be diffuse or localized along with underlying stromal reaction and even pigments on endothelium. But another form of disease from where these parasites are isolated is a stromal form of keratitis mimicking um, a corneal ulceration caused by other pathogens. There are challenges in terms of infrastructure also. Ophthalmologists are usually not trained adequately to handle uh, this problem of corneal infection. Nearly all cases are treated empirically without any microbiological workup. Many of the potent antimicrobials are either not available or are expensive and the surgical modality is not available to them because of lack of donor corneas. There are several other challenges which are in the form of improper management of trauma. Anybody who gets trauma first try to uh, treat themselves using homemade remedies or go to the traditional healers rather than contacting uh, ophthalmologist or trained medical professional. This result in delayed presentation with the, with the uh, widespread infection on the cornea. The ch the, we are also having challenge of harmful practices delayed diagnosis even on the part of ophthalmologist and the unique microbiology that I discussed with you. In addition, bacterial isolates are showing reduced susceptibility to fluoroquinolones and oxacillin um, uh, and several of the new pathogens are also being uh, emerging as important causes of corneal infections. If we have to handle this situation and try to reduce the morbidity and loss of vision from this entity, we will have to try to have effective management strategies for corneal aberrations and minor trauma. We will also have to pay attention to better healthcare delivery system so that people have access to medical care uh, at the village level. We will have to educate masses against use or harmful eye practices and educate eye care providers for early diagnosis and appropriate treatment as well as early referral. And this instruction course was designed as one of the attempts uh, in improving the uh, outcome of corneal ulceration. Thank you very much.